Hey guys, and welcome to our Shadowlands tier list for solo PvP. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at all the DPS classes in the game, and talking about how they stack up against each other for world PvP, duels, and battlegrounds. So if you enjoy solo PvP content, then this is the video for you. We're going to be giving each DPS class a score out of 10 for 3 aspects. First is how they perform in duels, giving you the best chance to dominate your friends or flex in Elwyn or Durotar. Second is how each class performs in world PvP, making your adventures in war mode or weekly kill quests a breeze. And our third rating is gonna be based off solo battlegrounds for when you enjoy solo PvP but in a more of a coordinated environment. We'll then add up the scores of all three and give each class a total score. Just a disclaimer, to simplify this process we're gonna be ranking classes and not individual specs. And this is only including DPS so healers and tanks will not be included. Before we get into the video though, we here at Skillcapped spend countless hours hours consulting and working alongside the best professional players around the globe to make primarily arena focused content. Although this guide is obviously a little different, if you enjoy this type of content and want to see more battlegrounds, world pvp or even dueling content for shadowlands, be sure to hit that like button and ring that bell and let us know what ideas you have in the comments below. But enough talk. Let's jump into the video. Starting off at our lowest rank, we've got Warriors. Now it comes to no surprise that Warriors are just not the best when it comes to solo PvP. For duels, we've ranked them 4 out of 10. Fury is the best dueling spec for Warrior due to its self-healing with Bloodthirst and Talents like Furious Charge and the added mobility from the PvP Talent Barbarian. Despite this though, when stacked up against other classes, Warrior lacks the self-healing, mobility, and strong cooldowns that other classes bring, and don't have really favorable matchups due to this. We've also scored Warriors of 4 for World PvP, for pretty much the same reasoning. If you're caught out in the open world questing or doing activities in war mode, then you're pretty much a sitting duck. No ways to break crowd control or to get around range slow, and outside of charge and heroic leap, you can easily be crowd controlled and then just get kited by capable players. Although if you do manage to gain uptime as fury, you can often sustain through a lot of other classes damage if it ends up being a 1v1. Finally, for battlegrounds, we've again scored warriors of 4, so 4s all around. When it comes to battlegrounds, warriors are hands down the weakest class solo. Arms is going to be the best spec, but in going arms, you lack a lot of self sustain. You can charge in, get in the middle of the team fight, then you either get focused down or just slowly rotted. As for flag maps, you offer nothing in either offense or defense. On all other maps including base maps, your team fighting is generally weak without a healer, and your 1v1 or defending potential is again super weak. But heroic leaping into a group of enemies and blade storming can deal some decent spread pressure if you manage to stay alive. Overall, the best parts of warrior in battlegrounds are finishing off targets with death sentence and execute, and the pressure you can get with sharpened blade. But if you're aiming to just jump into a battleground and have fun, there are definitely definitely better choices out there. We're giving Warriors a total score of 4 out of 10 for solo PvP. Coming in next, we've got Death Knights, scoring a 7 out of 10 for duels. The best dueling spec for Death Knights is going to be Unholy. The reasoning behind this is that a lot of your damage comes from your disease damage overtime effect combined with your pets like your Ghoul, Gargoyle, and Abomination. Tools like Anti-Magic Zone and Death Advance make you a nightmare for casters to deal with, allowing you to maintain uptime and deal with their offensive pressure incredibly well. The legendary Death's Embrace only goes on to further make casters' life a nightmare in dealing with you. But what Death Knight struggles with is high damage melee classes. Things like Pharaoh, Windwalker, and Rogue can quickly burst you down even through your potent self-healing and defensives. Moving on to world PvP, a lot of the same factors remain, but Death Knight loses 1 point, scoring a 6. The reasoning behind this is that unholy Death Knights deal with burst damage very poorly. If you're fighting multiple targets or get caught without your defensive cooldowns up, then you're gonna get burnt down extremely quickly. For Battlegrounds, we've scored Death Knights a 5 out of 10. Being melee in large scale teamfights can often be detrimental. You get focused first and just end up going down incredibly quickly. Your only real contribution is gonna be coming from your auras increasing the damage of your casters. The one plus that Death Knights do have is their Covenant ability Abomination Limb from the Necro Lords. This allows you to group enemies up in teamfights. Overall for Battlegrounds, Death Knight has both weak mobility and weak disengage, but Unholy brings a little more sustained AoE damage on large teamfight maps, while Frost does some very good bursts from Chill Streak if you can group targets up, but is more cooldown dependent, although neither spec really performs that great. This results in Death Knights gaining a rather lackluster total score of a 6. 
Warlocks are next in our rankings, coming in with a 5 out of 10 for duels. Warlocks are just not cut out for dueling. Demonology is a ramp up spec, destruction requires you to get long casts off, and affliction really doesn't have that much upfront damage. Out of the three though, when it comes to dueling, destruction is gonna be the best, as you have multiple schools of magic, strong cooldowns with inferno and demon soul, and your demonic resolve allows you to secure casts. Destruction does decently well if you're not able to burst them down, as you still have strong crowd control like fear, Coil and Shadow Fury. But the lack of sustain or kiting ability while relying heavily on fast casting is why Warlocks only score a 5 out of 10 for duels. In world PvP though, Warlocks gain a bit more strength and an extra point. If you're able to get the jump onto your opponent, Affliction can start getting dots up and unloading damage. Destruction can hit you with a massive Chaos Bolt, taking half your life before you even get near them. But if you're the one getting jumped on, it can often be quite rough, especially if you're caught without any shards or cooldowns ready. Despite their weakness in duels in world PvP though, though Warlock shines in Battlegrounds, being amongst the best classes and probably best all around for pure damage. Affliction has insane spread pressure, being able to dot up multiple targets and punish dispels, with unstable Affliction easily topping the overall damage charts. Destruction has the potential to deal good spread pressure with Immolate, but also burst single targets down with Chaos Bolt. Both specs can just sit at the back of a fight and unload damage using tools like Gateway or Portal to kite if they do get focused. You can look to ink bases with your crowd control and you can defend with a pet. Honestly, Warlocks are one of the best casters for solo battlegrounds and score an easy 9 out of 10. This gives Warlocks a total score of 6.6 .6 out of 10, but if you enjoy battlegrounds then they are definitely a great class to pick up. Up next on our list, we've got Paladins scoring a respectably high 8 in duels. Retribution is one of the best melee duelers in the game due to their incredibly strong cooldowns. You've got your high burst from Wing's ridiculous damage from Execution Sentence, the ability to Divine Shield and pump out damage while inside. Then you've got some of the highest healing in the game with either Word of Glory or Flash of Light combined with Healing Hands or Selfless Healer. And if you survive another 30 seconds, which is very possible, you have Lay on Hands and even Blessing of Protection to then further rotate depending on what you're facing. Unless you get heavily kited or crowd controlled, it's unlikely you lose all that many duels. Now in regards to world PvP, Rhett loses a couple of points, scoring a 6. The main reason for this is that Rhett is heavily dependent on cooldowns. If you're caught in the open world without your wings or bubble, then you're basically useless. Not to mention in the open world, there's a lot more space in order to kite. And as we know, being kited is a Rhett's biggest weakness. But just like in duels, if you have your cooldowns ready and uptime on the target, then you're incredibly strong in 1v1 situations. For Battlegrounds, Retribution Paladins again score a 6. If you're looking to run in and pop your cooldowns and one-shot a single target every few minutes, then you're gonna have great fun. But in terms of topping the damage charts, you're gonna be nowhere near a lot of other classes. Although there is the potential for some decent AoE cleave on grouped up maps like Silver Shard Mines with Divine Storm, Final Reckoning, and the Legendary Tempest of the Lightbringer. For the most part though, your biggest contribution other than your single target cooldown reliant burst is your off healing with World of Glory and Luminescence. But the lack of mobility to move between objectives and weak team fighting overall without cooldowns results in Retribution's biggest strength being easily defending bases. This gives Paladin a total score of 6.6 .6 out of 10. If you're enjoying the video so far, a subscription to the channel would be phenomenal. The go-to hunter specs right now for solo PvP are gonna be either survival or marksman. Both of them are good depending on a few different scenarios. In duels, it's up in the air which spec offers the most. Marksman is decent versus casters while survival poses more of a threat when up against melee damage dealers. Sadly, beast mastery is just way too weak damage wise and doesn't compete with either. Although both survival and marksman score a 5 out of 10 for dueling, hunter's biggest issue is a complete lack of any real self-healing. And outside of their only real defensive aspect of the turtle, if you're able to hit them and survive their burst then you're gonna have no real issue. With that in mind though, survival does do well into a few classes. You're able to kite and survive against most melee, but will lose to almost all casters. Marksman is the opposite where you're able to burst casters extremely hard if they have no way of sustaining themselves. In the open world, it's a little different. If you're able to get the opener on unsuspecting targets, you can quickly burst them down before they can even react as marksmanship. Not to mention the more room available to you the stronger marksman becomes, as you can use your extended range from the PvP talent sniper shot to heavily outrange your opponents, and even utilize high explosive trap to take advantage of the terrain. 
Where Hunter truly shines though is in Battlegrounds. Playing solo Battlegrounds as a marksmanship hunter is one of the most fun experience you can have. You sit back with sniper shot at a range where nobody else can hit you and just hurl aimed shots at players dealing half of their health. Although you lack any real AoE damage, the pure burst and single target is enough to take out your opponents one by one. To add insult to injury, you can even pick up the Kyrian Covenant ability Resonating Arrow which allows you to ignore line of sight. So not only can you stand 60 yards away from your enemies where they can't hit you, but you can also behind line of sight while doing so. You're gonna enjoy solo world PvP, but more importantly, Battlegrounds Hunter is gonna be a great pickup in Shadowlands, getting a total score of 7. The next class we're gonna take a look at is Monks, specifically Windwalker Monks. In solo PvP and 1v1s, Windwalker thrives. Having a perfect kit with high mobility with rolls, flying serpent kick, and even transcendence to kite or catch up with your opponents. Paired up with ridiculously high burst with cooldowns like Xuan, Fallen Order, and Serenity combined with Fist of Fury. Along with this high burst and high mobility, they also have extremely strong defensives. Touch of Karma specifically if you're unable to immune it off makes for one of the most powerful 1v1 tools. And to top it all off, the ability to self-heal with Vivify and Reverse Harm makes Monks one of the strongest duelers available, scoring them a very high 9 out of 10, losing only to a few select classes. In regards to world PvP, all of the same points remain. Windwalker has high consistent damage even without their cooldowns, plus the ability to kite out most classes. That means if you're in a sticky situation or if your opponent gets the jump on you, you can flying serpent kick them away, double roll, and then look to heal up or just retreat. But if you're caught without karma or a transcendence down, you're gonna be a lot weaker than you would be in an organized duel. There's only a select few classes that can give Windwalkers a run for their money in any 1v1 scenario. Although if you're looking for 1v2s or skirmishes, then Windwalker falls off a little, so they get an 8 out of 10 for world PvP. Now where Windwalkers fall off is Battlegrounds. While Windwalkers excel in 1v1s, their kit is almost useless when it comes to Battlegrounds. You lack any real cleave damage outside of Fist of Fury, which requires enemies to be in close proximity. Your pressure can easily be healed through and you generally just can't get too much done solo. There are a few exceptions of course with maps like Kotmugu, but generally speaking, out of all DPS classes, Windwalker does not perform well in teamfights and lacks the crowd control to perform well in assaulting bases. With Battlegrounds bringing their total score down, Windwalkers score a respectable 7 out of 10. But if you enjoy dueling, then a Windwalker is obviously a great choice. Up next on the list, we've got Demon Hunters. Throughout BFA, Demon Hunters were considered the kings of solo PvP and for good reason, but they've fallen by the wayside considerably going into Shadowlands. As always, starting with dueling, Demon Hunters score a 7, having huge bursts during Metamorphosis combined with I-Beam and Unbound Chaos, meaning the more damage you do, the more self-healing you get. Where Demon Hunters excel in duels is against casters. Classes like Priest, Warlocks, and Elementals all stand next to no chance. Not only do Demon Hunters have reverse magic to remove, but also now a self-dispel in Cleanse from Flame. Meaning if you rely on magic debuffs in order to do damage, between these two dispels and interrupt and two stuns, you're gonna have a hard time. Why they only get a 7 in our book though is their weakness to melee. In a 1v1, Demon Hunter loses to pretty much any melee with any form of lockdown. Rogues are impossible, Windwalkers are hard, and even Warriors can take you down. The same applies to world PvP, but this time you can fully take advantage of your insane mobility. If the fight is not going in your favor, there aren't a lot of classes that can keep up with a demon hunter. The added benefit of NPCs dropping soul fragments also can give you an advantage, allowing you to leech from mobs and pick up soul fragments in order to gain some extra healing. The only real weakness of a demon hunter is if you're caught out by a class who can lock you down and then burst. Even if you're caught without metamorphosis ready, the short cooldown of I-Beam paired up with demonic means you'll always have have the ability to get inside meta if you get into an unexpected fight, leaving Demon Hunter with a score of 8 out of 10 for world PvP. Moving on to Battlegrounds, Demon Hunters have one strength, and that's their mobility. This means that they can do very well depending on the map. You can have a huge impact on maps like Silver Shard, Temple of Kotmogu, and Arathi Basin. Where Demon Hunters falter though is their team fighting. If targets don't stack up, then you're gonna have relatively weak cleave and single target damage that isn't really too impactful. So if you're playing more tactical in battlegrounds looking to assault bases and fully utilize your spectral sight, Demon Hunter is a great pick option. But purely based off their team fighting ability, Demon Hunters are amongst the weakest. This gives them a 6 out of 10 for solo battlegrounds, which further results in a total score of 7 for solo PvP.
Taking a look at shamans now, there is both elemental and enhancement to take into consideration. In duels, we've scored shamans a 7. Both specs bring a ton of disruption with grounding, wind share, and a few other tools and very good off healing. Enhancement has instant healing with maelstrom weapon, but both specs have the legendary earthen harmony, which even after nerfs makes it incredibly hard to kill either when paired up with healing surges. Known for their incredibly high burst damage, enhancement can 100-0 targets with ascendance, while elemental can lock you down with lightning lasso and finish you off with a hard-hitting Earth Shock, especially when both utilize Heroism or Bloodlust. Both specs are very competent duelers and both have the same strengths. If DPS Shamas can kite you and consistently get heals off, then they are more than likely going to outlast you. But high burst damage classes like Rogues and even Monks will be able to kill you through any potential self-healing. This results in Shamans scoring a decently high 7. The same goes for World PvP. Although the larger area not being limited to a dueling zone gives you some added ability to kite, Shamans suffer the same fate. If your opponent can lock you down in stuns, it's likely you lose. But things like warriors, red paladins, and other casters can be easy pickings if you're elemental. Depending on the location, you can also look to abuse thunderstorm, knocking enemies to their death. Overall, there isn't much change between world PvP and dueling though, other than maybe starting the encounter with some added maelstrom. So again, we're scoring shamans a 7. Now where shamans, more so elemental, truly shines is in battlegrounds, especially team fighting. The reasoning behind this is the control of lava PvP. Talon. This means you can sit back in a team fight, flame shock as many people as you can, and then just continuously hurl out hard hitting lava bursts. The more flame shocks you have out, the more lava bursts resets you get. Pair this up with ascendance, and you've got some ridiculous damage. You can then also use your maelstrom to pick off targets with earth shock or do some extra cleave and disruption with Earthquake. The Venthyr Covenant ability Chain Harvest is also some of the highest AoE damage possible in the game. Shaman's only weakness is if you're singled out and trained, as to play this spec requires a lot of sitting back and casting. Enhancement on the other hand is much weaker of course. Being melee, you're gonna have to be inside the thick of it to deal any damage, and your only real AoE comes from Fire Nova which has a low range of only 8 yards. Nonetheless, Shamans get a very strong 8 when it comes to battlegrounds, based off elemental. This results in a total of 7.3 out of 10 for shamans. If you're looking for a high burst caster that excels in solo battlegrounds, then look no further. Coming in next, we've got Druids. Now Druid can of course play either Feral or Balance. Both have their strengths. For dueling, we've given Druids a solid 8. The best dueling spec is hands down Feral. Pharaoh brings high burst damage, good sustained damage, and more importantly, the ability to kite, heal themselves up, and reset the fight altogether. What makes Feral strong is Heart of the Wild and also Restoration Affinity. You pair these two up and you're basically a healer that does the damage of a DPS class. Cyclone, Bash, huge ferocious bites with Incarnation makes Pharaohs a force to be reckoned with in duels. As for balance, a lot of the same points remain, although you have a lot less burst and are required to cast to build up astral power, making them a weaker alternative but alas, still strong. Though Pharaoh still has some hard matchups. Rogues, Windwalkers, and anything that can burst you down can be a struggle. The whole playstyle of a Druid makes them great when it comes to world PvP. Thanks to Prowl, you're able to pick and choose any fight you want to take. And with Travel Form, you're one of the most mobile classes, meaning if things go south, you can quickly build distance, heal up with your powerful self-healing, and then resume the fight. Both Pharaoh and Balance have great kits. You come out of stealth, pop your incarnation, and burst somebody instantly. Then let your dots or bleeds do the work while you kite them out. Due to this, Druids score a very high 9 when it comes to world PvP. Unlimited space to kite with Cyclone Roots and Travel Form, Stealth and their durability makes them one of the strongest solo world PvPers in the game. In Battlegrounds, Pharaoh and Balance lose a few points scoring a 7. Honestly, they are by no means bad. Pharaoh can look for small skirmishes, objectives, or even insing bases, while Balanced Druid does some decent spread pressure and AoE pad damage with Starfall and your damage overtime effects Sunfire and Moonfire. Overall, neither specs can have a huge impact in this way of the battleground. Although if you want to just queue up, deal some huge AoE damage, and see numbers flying everywhere in large-scale teamfights, then Boomkin is one of the best as you have an easy way to get your damage overtime effects up on multiple targets, and the reworked Starfall doesn't have a target cap. Adding up the scores, Druids have a very high 8 out of 10 overall. We've now reached our top 3 solo specs. If you're still enjoying this video and have made it this far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Our first addition to the top 3 is going to be Mage. For dueling, Mage's best spec is gonna be Frost, although Arcane can be decent. 
Frost has without a doubt some of the highest bursts out of any caster, combined with the most control, easily scoring them a 9. If played well, Frost Mage can stop any melee ever connecting. They have 2 ice blocks to rotate through, incredible slows with Cone of Cold, Roots, and if anything ever does go bad, they can just look to Polymorph, build distance, and use Conjured Food to reset the fight. Generally speaking, mages are not at all durable. If you get uptime on them, they're gonna quickly fall. This isn't exactly the case with the legendary Triune Ward, which gives mages Ice Barrier, Blazing Barrier, and also Prismatic Barrier, making them a lot more durable than you might think. If you want a good 1v1 caster, look no further as there's only a very select few classes and specs that can even come close to beating a mage right now. The same applies with World PvP. If you're getting the jump on targets, you can instantly kill them before they even know you're there. If you do get jumped on yourself, if it's not a class you can kite, you can always look to just reset the fight with polymorph or build distance with blinks and eat to full. Simply put, high burst and insane control make mages one of the best 1v1 and small skirmish classes in the game, and very much worth again of a 9 out of 10 for world pvp. Despite their extremely high dueling in world pvp rankings, where mage falls off is battlegrounds. While all this control and crowd control you bring with mage is good in duels or world pvp, when it comes to large scale team fights, you lack the same impact. You can sit at the back of a team fight and spam damage, but you're not gonna provide the same sort of impact as a warlock, priest, or even hunter. While fire used to be the go-to spec, what was extremely good in battlegrounds now with a cooldown put on greater pyroblast is heavily fallen off, so it leaves either frost or arcane. Frost brings some added utility with AoE slows on certain maps and decent single target burst or group up cleave, whereas Arcane has less utility but have way more single target burst. This earns Mage a 7 out of 10 for Battlegrounds. Adding up the scores for the Mage, they get an 8.3 out of 10. So if you want a high control caster that excels in 1v1s and small skirmishes, then look no further. Coming in next on our list is gonna be a class that honestly hasn't been too great for solo PvP for a fair few expansions, and that's Shadow Priest. After their mini rework, Shadow Priests are one of the stronger duelers, having a great defensive kit with Fade and Dispersion, strong casted healing with Shadow Men paired up with the Measured Contemplation Legendary, and strong passive healing with Devouring Plague, Vampiric Embrace, and Power Word Shield. You have high instant burst as you're able to instantly get your damage overtime effects up, go into Void Form, and pop Power Infusion and Shadow Fiend. You also have great crowd control with Silence, Psychic Horror, and Fear, and even the utility of Mass Dispel or Dispel Magic. Best of all is the most powerful Covenant ability in the game for solo PvP which is Mind Games. What it does is that it basically turns your target's damage into healing for 5 seconds on top of some initial burst. In general, this is a very strong kit, which we award Shadow an 8 out of 10 for. The only reason it's not higher is because they heavily struggle versus a lot of the better melee duelers on our list like Rogues and Windwalkers. This strong utility and self-healing makes Shadow Priests great at World PvP as well especially as they're not so cooldown reliant as other classes can be, so it's not often the case that you can be taken by surprise. In fact, more often than not, if you're out in the open world and get jumped on, you'll already have some insanity stacked up, ready to get your damage and healing rolling. As for solo battlegrounds, Shadow Priest is up there with Warlock for being one of the best classes. You've got insane teamfight potential as all of your damage comes from your dots, so you can sit back, dot up a ton of targets with misery, and watch your shadowy apparitions fly towards the enemies, often topping down damage if you're able to freely cast. Their only true weakness inside of Battlegrounds are interrupts and dispels. But if you enjoy the AoE spread pressure playstyle of watching all your enemies slowly rotting down, then Shadow Priest is gonna be our best dot based caster for solo PvP scoring a 9 out of 10 for Battlegrounds. This gives Priests a total score of 8.3 out of 10. To finish up our tier list, the last class and best solo PvPer is Rogue. For dueling, we've given Rogue full marks, a 10 out of 10. There is no question that Rogue is the best dueling spec in the game. It's been that way for as long as we can remember, and Shadowlands is only adding to Rogue's 1v1 strength with additions like Premeditation and Poisons returning to the game. The best spec for dueling is without a doubt gonna be Subtlety, but both Assassination and Outlaw can do well. However, the power of Shadow Dance allowing you to stun lock your enemies combined with the high burst of Shadow Strike and Akari's Soul Fragment Legendary means you can pretty much glow wall or force a trinket from any opponent in the opener. And unless you're dueling another stealth class, the opener is always going to be in your advantage. And that's not even mentioning how a rogue can just reset at any point. If your opponent trinkets the opener, you can then vanish and wait for diminishing returns, or blind stealth and sap your opponent and again wait for diminishing returns. Honestly, there isn't anything a rogue can lose to if two equal players duel. For world PvP, we've again scored rogue a 10 out of 10. Let's face it, if you can vanish away from any fight and completely reset, there isn't many situations where you're gonna struggle. The inherent strength of 
being able to pick and choose which encounter you want to take paired up with the control and burst means that you can even look to take fights where you may be outnumbered. Sap one, open on the other, blind off the sap, kidney shots, cheap shots, rogue's kit is just made for solo pvp. Arguably the only real weakness you could argue a rogue has is a lack of self healing. But once more, shadowlands has improved upon this with soulbind conduits like recuperator or even just picking up the talent soothing darkness. Alright, so with rogues being incredibly strong 1v1, throw them into a battleground and this kit is gonna be a lot weaker, right? Well, wrong. As a rogue, you can take two different approaches. First is going sub. Now while they're not the best team fighters, sub rogue on any map with objectives, which is pretty much any non-epic battleground, can single-handedly win the game for their team. You can use your stealth to move around the map and ninja cap or just kill defenders on base maps. On flag maps, you can CC healers and one-shot flag carriers. On teamfight maps or epic battlegrounds, you can respect to assassination. And with Fan of Knives and Crimson Tempest paired up with your poisons and dots, you deal the most cleave out of any melee and can easily top damage charts if you stay alive. Rogue is essentially the perfect solo battleground class. You can't lose 1v1s, you can do good in teamfights, you can get bases and defend bases. You can do it all. And because of that, rogues are again scoring the perfect 10. Overall, rogues of course score a 10 out of 10. So with every class now covered, let's quickly recap the overall scoring. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Would you change anything? Be sure to let us know in the comments. That's gonna be it for this video. Before we leave you, we here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into PvP focused content. If you would like to support the channel and also stay up to date with the latest Shadowlands PvP news and guides, as well as tier lists like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified the moment we release any new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.